I'm sure you've heard the old Wild West phrase, there's gold in them there hills, but you also probably know that there was a lot of gold in them there rivers as well. Placer deposits are sands and gravels as typically found in stream beds. And placer mining involves the processes of sifting through these gravels, typically for heavy metals like gold. And this is all due to the general notion that those dense minerals tend to settle more readily in moving water. So extracting gold from such deposits usually involves something like gold panning or sluicing, the use of rockers, or even dredging. But how does anyone know even where to begin to look? Well, there are actually specific places where heavy minerals like gold tend to settle. So today, let's take a quick look at the main places in rivers and streams that you're most likely to find gold. Typically, a good place to look are the inside of river meanders. If we think about a typical river that meanders, it curves, and on the outside portion, we have the area where the river water cuts into the bank. But on the inside portion, that's where the river deposits most of its sediments, and if it contains it, heavy metals like gold. Another target area is just downstream from a tributary that meets the main channel of the river. And you'd still be targeting the inside of the direction of flow, or the inside of the meander. Similarly, deposition can occur where rivers meet the sea. Placer will be more likely to accumulate in irregularities or undulations on the seafloor. This is typically referred to as beach placer, but historically these haven't been economically viable sources of gold. Similarly, in rivers, gravel bars serve as an important source of placer deposits. The placer tends to accumulate on the side of the gravel bar opposite of the current direction. Next up are rock holes. Rock holes are divots found on the river bottom. The rock holes, or potholes as they're sometimes referred, are created by the erosive action of circulating water filled with sediment. It thus creates a mini basin in which placer tends to settle. Waterfalls through erosive action also tend to create a settling basin for these heavy minerals. That first shiny gold nugget picked up by an ancient human was probably in the form of a placer deposit. In more recent history, mining booms like the California Gold Rush and many of the gold rushes throughout the Wild West, including the Yukon Gold Rush, were all likely kicked off by someone finding a gold nugget, maybe in a stream bed, but likely, again, in a placer deposit. This gold in the rivers hinted at gold in the surrounding hills, for which they were able to locate the load or hard rock source of the gold, if they were lucky enough. Placer gold and placer minerals can be thought of as the easy pickings when it comes to mining. Not to take away from the know-how and skills and equipment needed to find good placer, but it was certainly an easier task than the hard rock mining or open pit mining. That's why much of the placer deposits were heavily picked over through the 18 and 1900s, and subsequent miners were forced to test their luck in finding the mother load, or veins in hard rock that usually required some blasting, drilling, and descending into holes deep in the earth. Something like gold panning would have been the easier method for finding placer gold, but like I mentioned, a lot of that is pretty much picked over at this point. Later methods involved hydraulic mining, which literally was blasting away at the rock wall with water. Lots of water. Another later method included dredging. You can see dredge piles in certain parts of Montana. In Sumter, Oregon, where I recently took this video of dredge piles still in that old gold mining town. All the way up to Dawson City, Yukon, home of the Klondike Gold Rush, which is infamously known for its tailing piles visible by satellite. Historically, these regions that sparked gold rushes contained large amounts of this placer gold and have been referred to as gold fields. Hence the famous California gold fields, the Klondike gold fields, and there's even a town in Nevada literally known as Goldfield. Sometimes gold is also found in places not near any modern river or seaway or waterway at all, but these places were once associated with an old stream channel. These are called paleoplacer deposits. And there's another tremendous source of untapped gold in our waters today, but this time it's not rivers. You might have heard of gold in the deep sea, and while it was historically the dream of mining companies and investors, it is more recently becoming a reality thanks to changes in technology, demand, and global agreements. 
If you want to learn more about that, check out my video on the biggest gold rush in history that you've never heard of because it's just beginning now.